temperatures surprisingly warm 64 degrees the air temp water temp is 46 so it, the water temp's steady falling steady falling so you guys that are hitting those deep holes give it some time they're coming that bait's gonna be there and uh it's coming hey but stay at them you can't you'll not know don't go by a report go out there and get first-hand knowledge first-hand knowledge hey it's been slow very slow hit one maybe two per pile very lucky you may get seven or eight like i did on my last trip i was lucky uh, but that challenge of coming out here hunting for those fish hey stick with it stick with it put the time in do you some scanning you don't have to drive 5,000 miles an hour to a, a known spot don't pass up those good spots that you could scan and possibly sell good school of fish take your time out here enjoy it and and have fun uh, I'm gonna have to try to hide behind a protected bank today because the wind is only supposed to get worse this, this these conditions can get pretty brutal out here especially on this in this open water down here on the south end but anyway let's get with it let's get with it bet that that's that's all crappie mixed in with all that bait down there so here I'm adjusting my lower range since I run it in manual running it in manual makes it a lot easier to read since the screen don't jump up and down like it does when it when it's in auto I talk about that in depth on my look at that how to set a fish finder video I'll put a link right here in the corner for those of you that haven't watched it it's a very long video but it has a lot of good information in I'm it. I'm willing to bet that's crappie down there it's like I say, guys, you want to use that 2D right at 40 feet of water. I don't, I don't show it often unless I'm up on the front, but uh, that 2D is a valuable too. Wow, look at that. Wow, that makes me want to check that out. But this wind is, this wind is pretty bad. I may have to check that. I may have to deal with the wind for a bit. I have most of the stumps in this area marked. One thing that helps me in my marker buoy placement is I get it ready so that I can grab it very quickly as soon as I pass over the pile. Check out how I do this right here. And as soon as that pile starts to show on my screen, I toss my marker buoy. I know my lenses are probably going to fog up really bad because my glasses already are, but uh, it's just the the way the the weather is. I mean, it's it's pretty bad. That little, that looks pretty good. We're gonna we're gonna check that out. It's a bit windy, but uh, we're gonna see what happens. Keeping in mind the wind direction, as soon as that stump started to appear on the screen, I tossed my marker upwind of it. So what we're going to start with today is a uh, Lemmis tackle. That's a two inch stinger, black and short trues on a one eighth number two sickle. And uh, we're going to drop down here and see what happens. I'm going to go with, uh, start off with crappie nibbles just to see what happens. I'm going to start off with crappie nibbles. That wind seemed like it's going to die down a little bit. It would be nice if it does. They called for uh, eight to nine miles an hour today, but I always double it from what they predict because they, they usually never get it right. It's always 
more than what they'll predict so and what's been working really good for me here lately guys is is swimming my bait and it's been working pretty good for, for the fish that i've been catching so i mean it's just not a a great bite but what i am catching has been uh they've been reacting to to me swimming my bait not a lot of action yeah it win it'd be really nice if it die on down it looked like it's gonna die down so here's another lonesome stump out in the middle of no man's land this is what i do guys and when the bite gets tough like right now the big piles are just not holding active fish these small piles you pick some fish up possibly four or five possibly one but these stumps hold fish and when the bite gets tough this is where i go and by the way this is the exact stump that i caught that big blue cat off of you'll see me get hooked up on it here coming up also i'm gonna do the giveaway drawing for that giveaway right now so to be entered in this giveaway all you had to do was type in your comment talking catfish and one thing about fishing deep oh there's a fish on that come on out of there there's a fish Probably 20 pounds on wood in the bed. I bet you he bottomed out my uh, 15 pound scale. That choker hit that jig. I do tell you. Ain't what I'm out here after, but hey, that's fun, y'all. That's a big boy right there. That's a big. I bet you that joker 20 pounds. I ain't gonna waste time. Waste my time up. When? Get on back down yonder. Don't mess my jig no more. Oh, I got a surprise for you. It's a point. I've always heard the old timers say that uh, if you're catching goo, it means some crappy down there. So let's see. So let's get back to the crappie on the trip after the catfish. That ain't working. That big old blue probably got him spooked off that pile. I'm gonna try one thing, one more thing before I pull out of here. And that's uh, drop a small bait down there. So some of you may not have the patience to sit here and watch how patient I must be to get bit on these crappie, or even more so, how patient I am figuring out what it's gonna take to get these fish to bite. I go through several changes. If you haven't noticed, I've been using a three inch bait. I'm using a two inch bait 
and I'm even going down to a 1.3 tad fry and this is just what I'm having to do to stay on my home lake and figure my fish out and this is the steps that I take to figure these fish out stick around let's see if this stuff works you will be able to put it in your tackle box and use it when you go to your lake when the bite gets tough That ain't working. We're gonna drop down here on a stick, y'all. It's just a stick. So I'm giving these baits about five minutes each, working the depth, giving different actions, and regardless of the action that I'm giving, remember the water temp here is 46 degrees. So I'm keeping my presentation very slow, not giving any fast action as there's no bait fish down there moving fast in 46 degree water temps this is one of my beliefs when the water temp gets cold on several lakes the bait fish becomes very lethargic and the crappie don't have to put in work to get a full belly and that reduces their feed time and you're going to have to get that bait in those fish face and really entice them to into feeding so a slow presentation is the best way to go. I don't know what kind of birds these are, but I guess they want to entertain me this morning. Thought that one was going to land on my rod a while ago. I'm not sure if you guys noticed that beat every three minutes or so and what that is is just uh i have my camera running on loop mode and i have the option for it to uh give that beat and i use that as a time limit on what i'm using the area i'm fishing or possibly just changing baits a uh, great idea to have even a stopwatch uh, that gives you a time limit on not getting bit on what you're using Oh, coyotes. Think I'm burning daylight. I know it's fish there. I can see them down on 2D. But, all right. Go with the old tadpole. It's going to take a week for it to get down on a little 16th head. But, we going to see. See if I got a downsize. All right, y'all. I'm gonna lay some truth on the line right here. Uh, it's like I say all the time. I don't sugarcoat anything. I'm gonna lay it on the line the way it is. There's a lot of guys that find spots. It's very seldom that I classify a spot a good spot. It's whether at that day, at that time, that spot could be on or could very possibly be off. Put the time in, mark you several spots. Don't just depend on one spot. I'll tell you this right now. So far on this trip, I fished at least 10 different small stumps or small laydowns. And that's how I figure these fish out and I find the active fish. Those are the ones that you want to you want to fish for. You don't want to fish for spots. You want to fish for active fish. You know, beady black. Tough bite, y'all. Tough bite. Bam. See if that makes something happen. As you can see, this is a very foggy, misty highly overcast day most would think that a dark bait may be the option to go with but as you've seen i pull that very bright short trues bait out let's see what that thing does uh oftentimes i go against what's the norm and let's see if it works out Huh? Y'all don't want to eat down there? Is that what the problem is? Be a 
Give me a sandwich. One bit. Little manger. Y'all know the saying. We gonna check. So yeah, let me know. Be one for the box. Hat pole went to work. Did you notice the bulging guts on those fish? They are a plum full and not hurting to get a meal. Well, we gonna check him. We gonna be close. Oh yeah, he right there. He's harvestable. So the cold front, the cold front blew through, and let me tell you, that temperature's dropped. I had to put my coat on. I'm glad I brought it. I know that uh, this morning, this morning when I launched. It was uh, 64 degrees, the air temp. And I'm willing to bet it's probably in the 40s right now. Low 50s, high 40s, I'm willing to bet. There are some days that you get out here and you just got to put your head down and go to work. Oh, he's barely, barely hooked. Oh, in the boat. He's not a keeper, but still fun. Nice thump. That little joker is chunky. Look at that gut. Wow. Letting it out, too. That's 10 inch fish, but we always let those make it. chunky 10 incher oh that buddy that that joker there made that 11 inch mark right there boy you bought a chunky little joker guys i'm telling you these small I'm, I, when i say small i mean small this is stuff that i've had marked for for years and the, the only times that I really spend the time to locate it and, and stay on it and fish it is when the bite is super tough. Another good mm -hmm. tip that mm -hmm. I'll lay out here, if you haven't noticed, what I do is, is switch scents just like I switch baits. It makes a huge difference at times. Have you several different scents? I have about five or six different scents on my boat. And if, if that bite's tough, I'm switching scents just like I am sizes and colors. No measures, no measure.
One thing that I'll guarantee you is if you put the time in and watch this video and pay attention to how I'm working my jig, there's no fast action, light, slight raises, slow swims. This stuff is working great with these cold water temps. The old kitty cat. Old channel cat. Are you on my brush pile? There we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This Lemmy's Tackle Monkey Milk with a purple hue mm -hmm. and a 1.75 Stinger Tail is by far what worked the best on this day. Now don't take it that this is a jig that you're going to purchase and it's the only jig that you need. As you've seen, I went through several different colors and several different sizes of jigs before I found a decent bite on this day. Well, I hope to hear that you enjoyed the tips and tricks of, of what is working for me. And I hope to hear that you put them to work. To be entered into a giveaway, type in your mm -hmm. comment what tips you feel will work best for you. Also, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that thumbs up and also consider subscribing if you haven't. As always, more coming soon.